questions from the show Britannia is, what is Kate's name? During the solstice celebrations in the first episode, the Romans attacked her village before Kate's coming-of-age ritual was completed, leaving her nameless, or the betwixt. Young women select a new name as they enter womanhood, but Kate was left without one. Part of the many tests Kate goes through in season one are because she is nameless. The gods must recognize her to approve her as the chosen one. You have faced the mighty earth, mother. Stare down the sister wind. Now time has come to face the water goddess. After the druids finally bless her and tattoo her face, she is sent with Divis for immersive druidic training, which includes the tests of the four elements and a two-month fasting period to induce the great vision. Her pilot, as he calls himself, is Divis the Outcast, who is a druid, but disgraced from the tribe of Varen because he was possessed by the dark god Puika. But Divis knows how the story ends, so he was trusted to guide and train Kate to become the great defender of the tribes of Britannia. I want to discuss a real-life historical figure who was a major combatant to the Roman invasion of Britain. If you have watched my other videos, you will know I like her a lot. She and her husband were queen and king of the British Celtic Iceni tribe. They had made peace with the Romans in Britain, but the Romans were pushing to tax the Britons and implement their own financial system, the silver coin of Emperor Nero. When King Persutagus died, rather than honoring the arrangement made with the Romans, centurions invaded the Iceni, publicly flogged the queen, and Roman soldiers raped her daughters. The Romans had hoped this would be their opportunity to gain a leg up in Britannia, but it actually had the opposite effect, and the Britons bonded together to fight back, with their leader being the chief of the Iceni, Queen Boudicca. Boudicca led a rebellion starting around 60 CE, and they conquered three Roman cities, slaughtering nearly 80,000 people, Romans and Britons alike, if the Britons were living in the cities. Emperor Nero nearly called back the Romans to prevent further loss, but Gaius Suetonius Paulinus, the Roman general, pledged he would conquer the Druids. As payback, the Romans decimated the sacred isle of Mona, Enus Mon, which held the secrets of the Druids and treasures of Britain. The Druids did not go down without a fight, and it is said both men and women awaited on the beaches for the Romans. The Romans were almost too afraid to fight them, but pressure from their Roman generals forced the onslaught, which was a devastating loss to the Britons' morale. It was after this that Boudicca and her tribesmen realized their loss and admitted defeat. It is said Boudicca took her own life, but the lives of her daughters are a mystery. No one knows what happened to them. I have a personal theory that it all ties into Arthurian legend as well, as you can find Boudicca to be a common figure in Arthuriana and role model for some of the strong female characters. My theory is that the Lady of the Lake line stems from Boudicca, perhaps from her daughters, and Nimue or Vivian or Morgana, depending on the tale, are descendants of hers. Boudicca was between 30 and 40 years old, which is pretty well aged for those times. She was well kept and was said to be fearsome to look upon with a scarred half of her face, but also was a striking woman with long tawny hair and a harsh voice. She was a warrior and rode a chariot into battle. In her suspected burial tomb was found the fine chariot she rode enameled in gold and decorated with coral along with a comb and other fine items showing her impressive status. Now going back to Britannia, we are told the story of Kate, who is approximately 14-ish years old. This story takes place around 43 AD. If we add the 17 years between Kate's age and Boudicca's rebellion, it would actually fit the timeline perfectly for Boudicca's age. It is interesting that the Britons merged to fight behind a female figure. While the Celts were not a patriarchal society, the fact that all of the tribes merged to fight behind one woman is significant in any society throughout history, particularly one fighting against a patriarchal nemesis who has already blatantly disrespected the opposing female leaders. It is remarkable that no men stepped up to try and take the place of a female leader in such a great war. But as we are shown in Britannia, queens are equally respected and receive equal treatment. They fight and they sacrifice themselves. Among the Druids, there are women tribal leaders and warriors, even women who strive to be warriors above all else. There is a tale of Boudicca from the beginning of the rebellion, which tells of her invoking divination in the name of the goddess Andrasta, and releasing a hair from the folds of her skirts. 
Interestingly, who does Divis love to have a chat with? A hare he calls Morrigan. Trust me, Morrigan, this is not the time. Unless you know how to get my ass off this stump, or better still know how to get to the Lake of Tears, I suggest you don't get involved. The name Boudicca has connections to Victorious, which likely stems back to her connection with Andrasta, who is the goddess of victory and typically depicted upon a chariot. Andra, the keeper of the lake, is patron of Varen and protector of the sacred lake of the Druids. She awaits the young girl from the Druids' prophecy. I must be here when the maiden comes. It is I who will anoint her in the lake. There are many historians who speculate if Boudicca was actually her true name or a name implemented throughout history as her tale was celebrated and she was made a hero of Britannia. The name Victoria comes from the celebrity of Boudicca. I find this to be a red herring for Kate's identity. Kate the Betwixt, who has no name, is given the title Victorious and raised to be the warrior and child of the gods. Another name hint which I believe can connect these two is Kate's sister is Lean. Her name is strikingly similar to Iceni or Iseen or Iseen. As the tribe is so ancient, the proper pronunciation is lost to time, so I've heard Iceni, Iceni, etc. But regardless, Isleen is noticeably similar. Isleen and Kate being two sisters who have lost their mother is another nod to Boudicca's daughters. A huge portion of season one is their father not knowing what happened to them, so again, similar to Boudicca's daughters. Boudicca being said to have a scarred half of her face or being fearsome to look upon may tie into Kate's skills in druidry. We saw her terrify the Roman prefectus in the glade with just a look and incantation. She also has the words of Varen tattooed on half of her face, which could be seen as scarring. Or, just an idea, what if she burns them off at some point, like we saw Phelan do when rejecting the druids? We have seen Kate have moments of despair where she might do something drastic such as that, which could leave her face quite scarred and fearsome. Divis is named her protector and he knows how the story ends. He seems sad when he tells Kate this, which could tie into Boudicca's loss and the Roman victory. But again, there are a lot of Arthurian overtones to this story, and if Boudicca's line stretched into the future, will Divis always be the protector of her line? Merlin has been known to say that he has lived through many lives, and I see so many parallels between Merlin and Divis. They are both druids, so that's a big one, but also they are both so tied to nature and divination and general quirkiness that perhaps Merlin's life is a future life for Divis. The tale of Myrden, the hairy man of the woods, is basically how Divis lives his daily life as an outcast. In several tales, Merlin even refers back to or is directly involved in the defense of Enos Mon, creating another connection between the two stories. If Divis is the protector of the line of Boudicca, it makes perfect sense for the line to stretch to the Lady of the Lake in the future, who is protected by Merlin or the Merlin of Britain at that time. In some tales, the Merlin is a title passed down as Archdruid of Britain, essentially. Druids also believe in reincarnation, so if Divis is destined to be the protector of that line, it would always come back to him in his next life. I know I'm getting philosophical, but it comes much easier to a magical bloodline than reality for me. We must mention the various overtones in the dynamic of Kate and Divis that touch back to Arthurian lore. We can see a lot of them popping up, particularly in episode 5 of Britannia, that tie back to the relationship between Merlin and Nimue and their magical training. For example, Divis developing an attraction toward Kate... Amina's father locked in the wall for violating a young girl, Kate's sacred test of sister water, and Divis becoming a prisoner to a tree are all very intertwined with Arthurian lore, specifically La Morte de Arthur. Oh yeah, and we cannot fail to mention the sword of power in the possession of the Druids. Anyways, to bring this all full circle, I think there are many clues pointing to this story being a well-rounded tale of the defense of Britain and her great feminist icon and leader from childhood to her last stand. We will not know until we learn her true name, and even that may not be Boudicca of the Iceni. The tale of Queen Boudicca is beloved and inspiring, and that's exactly where Kate's story is heading in Britannia. She is looked to as the savior, the chosen one, and above all, must be protected. 
She is the weapon against Rome, and Rome knows and fears this, and exhausts their resources to find her. But what do you all think? Do you have any name ideas for Kate the Betwixt? Where do you think this story will lead? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Keep an eye out for the Fae Underground, switching to Mondays to keep up with the Britannia scheduling, as we'll be covering that show starting next week. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to Fae Fire, and ring that notification bell to join the Fae Underground. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Already.